Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3. This is season two of our Grimgore campaign. And Zhao Ming has left his area. He's pushed west into the mountains and has been taking territory of ours after territory of ours. And it looks like that is not changing as in between turns, he moved towards Mount Thug and was victorious. Oh, please tell me you want peace. Where you stand. Are you trying to get peace? I would love that. Yes. I'm not even going to ask for more money. I never want to see these abominations again. Go live your best life, abominations. That peace treaty may not be good for Clan Rictus, though. In fact, that's probably why these guys called it, didn't they? Well, we did lose the settlement down here, but rest assured, we are not setting idly by. Zhao Ming is behind our main marching army. Artiful Atif and Argor have been moving towards this settlement for quite a few turns now, and I think it's time that we plant our feet. The Wa is not fully formed, but our armies should be more than enough to push right over. This is a decisive victory of this capital, but his main army is behind us. This is also our Wa target as well. So we're going to occupy this and hopefully use this as a foothold into this territory to push these guys back. I know I ought to resolve to that. I'm very interested to see how Zhao Ming responds to this. He could, of course, could take Navi Gorge and then we lose a lot of our ownership over this territory. More reinforcements are coming down from the north, although they are very far away. We are trying to march to the best of our ability with Grizzguts. He's been coming down from our capital to get down here. Uh, he is optimistically a, a week away, probably. Uh, we... Whoa! Kolek has taken territory away. Nice. Well, Kolek should be liking us more now, right? Because we're at war with providences he doesn't like. So this is actually working out beautifully. I don't have to pay these guys off any longer every turn, and it should hopefully be moving in the right direction. It looks like Norska that's not quite happening with. The vampires are not in a peace treaty with us, and it does look like we are deteriorating with them. So we're going to give them money and keep fighting guys that they don't like is what we're going to try to do. Even if it just improves stuff a little bit, that's enough for me. I don't even know if that moved in the right direction, though. Uh, Vlad fell back from Zufbar and went northwest, and that actually caused the elf that was encircling us to fall back as well. So we've been recruiting this army as a just-in-case kind of force over here. Now we might start to turn it into a more offensive powerhouse. Just moving down to help Vlad take territory at this point might be a good idea to help facilitate that we'll get some more orc boys we're mostly going to be encircling with an army like this nothing too crazy i'm not looking to do too much this does free up grimgor a bit though to pursue other interests since we have zufbar we might as well try to unite the region that means going for oak oh you didn't step on that right whoa grimgor Whoa, do not walk into Vlad territory. That's such a terrible idea. I don't know who these guys are. Yeah, I might, maybe I want to kill those guys. It's more beastmen rolling through. I didn't do that either. We'll see how they react to the mountains. Well, I had this army in place to help fight off the threat of the beastmen tribe. They, I'm seeing through the negotiations, they definitely wanted a non-aggression pact so they could kill Clan Rictus. Uh, Clan Rictus is currently my only friend, and they don't, they don't like that I took that non-aggression pact. So, it might be time to kill Clan Rictus. 
<laughs> we'll let them be the ones to decide that. I'm not going to strike first, but I think we probably keep an army nearby just for a rainy day, uh, which we do have one here. Alternatively, I could start moving this to the east to reinforce. Oh, and Zox Spider Killer is officially done recruiting. So he is going to march east toward the Valley of Horns and start back capping some of this territory that Zhao Ming has been taking. All in all, that peace treaty may have ruffled some feathers, but all in all, I think it helped us with stability quite a lot. Uh, we do have Kugath down here, which will be a threat, but I'm not going to jump on him anytime soon. His attitude towards me is actually improving. The Plague Father likes us. What does that mean? And with that, I did a little more maintenance, just spending money on upkeep and upgrading some buildings around the territory. But really, all eyes are on Zhao Ming to see what he does next. I mean, there is a small chance that he goes towards Kugath. I don't really believe that, but they're at war. Here he comes, going slightly closer to Nabi Gorge, but not crazy movement. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another one of the treants is moving even more north into the mountains. Clan Farrick reaches out. Do they... Are we at war? Clan Farrick, what are you thinking? Uh, Cleric Farrick is right here. They have already have Norska trouble. We are crazy well defended here as well. Uh, that is actually my biggest wall at this settlement bordering their territory. I don't have an army up north to stop them, but I can get one. <laughs> and Navi Gorge just received a plague because of our good friend Kugath. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, Zok is going to start moving east. We are going to continue to try to back cap any settlements that these guys have taken over. We could be flanked pretty quickly, so I don't want to move too far. But uh, that port's actually slightly out of range, isn't it? I wanted to take a bit more territory from these guys if I could. We do have a very big wah here with Argor. And a very big wall with Arda full of teeth. Who has the better marching army? Probably Argor by a considerable margin. So we're going to send Argor back. Arda full of teeth is going to march east, get in range of the Temple of Elemental Winds, and I'll try to make that my next target to actually take down. I'm not too familiar with the geography of this region as far as like, are there more cities hidden in this mist here? Uh, likely there are, I just don't know exactly where. So if I can hit this and then double back, back towards Argor, I think this is relatively defensible. We're actually pincering uh, Zhao Ming quite well with a few different marching armies. And if he goes west, he's running into Kugath, so he can do that all he wants, in my opinion. Uh, with our other army that we have coming to support, we might consider backing up up to defend but instead i'm going to underway to firemouth and then maybe underway across these mountain ranges to try to get to this area a bit faster Kolek actually likes me i like where this is going this does likely mean i need to change what my plan was for grimgore i was going to have him hang out by zufbar for quite a while Instead, I think Grimgor probably needs to start heading home. At least hit a friendly mountain range and start moving this way. Uh, the Crooked Moon seem to really like having me around, which is very nice. They also seem to have taken a pretty decent amount of territory. Last time I checked at our objectives, there was only one Greenskin faction left alive that I needed to kill, and that was Scabby Eye. And they are underneath these mountain ranges that we're just starting to begin to explore. Uh, however, I think I need my leader back at home. With Clan Farrick starting to feel cocky and the ever-chosen threat always looming, uh, leaving my northern border exposed is uh, its just not an option. We got to get back. Now, as our armies get bigger, so do our expenses. 
We're spending 23,000 gold every turn to upkeep the armies that we have now. And as you can see, we are still recruiting in several areas. So we are going to have to start making some changes or start to be a lot more aggressive with the targets we are going after. I need a recruitment area to the west. I'm trying to figure out where I actually want that to be. This region seems pretty good and relatively upgraded already. If I can get more money flowing into Karak Raziak, that could help solve some of our money problems here, but only for a very short time. Uh, we're going to need to address this marching army pretty soon, and this army is not big enough to do it. Well, not not this turn anyway. Zhao Ming is moving towards Nabi Gorge. It says a close defeat. I don't think it'll be close. But with Argor's army looming in an area that should be able to strike, we need to weaken this guy up as much as we can. All right, boys. This is where the battle is going to be taking place. This is the kind of environment that we are fighting over. I believe this is a former ogre settlement, but now that I've said that out loud, I don't know if that's actually the case. Looks like it to me anyway. Well, Zhao Ming is himself approaching from the western side. There's a double army that's going to be moving through here. And because we've never fought this faction, I'm going to zoom in on some of their units as well. They have flying Pegasus? Okay. <laughs> A lot of infantry units that are using shields as well. So they're going to mitigate. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. That's not nice. Well, this faction gains bonuses when they have ranged and melee units together. It's signified by this yin yang. So this side is terrifying. What about this side? This looks much more manageable. I don't think there's a world where we kill off the leader, but there's definitely a world where we can slay these units. Take, what is this, a compass in the back? Take this thing down? I wonder what this is even for. <laughs> this faction's kind of cool. So here's the plan. On the northwestern side, we have a decent amount of orcs that are going to be pushing towards whatever this compass is. If they get close enough on the high ground, we might be able to shoot down from here, but it looks like they're gonna stay just outside of that range. So I have lines of units stacked up here to hopefully withstand the force of what this army is pushing towards us for at least a minute or two. They're definitely going to die. Uh, back at the eastern side, once again, modest grouping of units to fight a modest grouping of units. The ultimate goal is that we kill off a lot of these smaller guys and hopefully achieve victory relatively quickly. Giving my boar guys a little room to go out of here as lightning starts to fall down on them. We are going to flank around the side, dodge these spears, and get right onto these ranged units as fast as we can. Hopefully these spears don't group up to meet us. As more artillery and fire starts to land on us, let's check in on our friends over here. The flying units have moved in. We see them. We're targeting them. And the leader, indeed, is approaching from the west. We do have a tier two tower to watch over the festivities and make sure that they are okay, but who knows how long that that will actually hold and help. Meanwhile, taking lots of damage on this side as well, although they broke their unity bonus. So we're gonna start marching in on this immediately. More lightning coming down from the sky. I'm not liking this vibe at all. No, thank you. Uh, boars are in place on the back line. Unfortunately, I messed up my archer placement back here, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, our commander is technically this group of orc big ones who's taking a pretty big punishment right now, but hopefully they will last. Uh, the leader has shifted into a fucking dragon. Okay, that's going about as good as you would think it is. And the main objective 
<laughs> is going to die off pretty quick uh, with that approaching. Although, you know, he I bet he's a big target like that. We might be able to do something. I'm not sure why they got their unity bonus back, but our boars are taking a bit of a beating back there. Uh, the rest of the units that pushed up are starting to get low, though. Let's make sure we get a good flank in here and attack those guys in the butt. Our boars are going to continue to hold that line for as long as they can. We're routing units like crazy on this side. It seems like these guys have really good archers. That's the impression I'm getting. So basically, we're using this battle to get some intel for when the main conflict happens. Although, if that guy could turn into a dragon, I don't know how much my shaman's going to be able to help out with that. Our wall is ready. Let's send it while we can. We've been completely breached on this side. He's going to be able to get to these objectives, no problem. We are starting to rally units over here, and I'm going to get them moving back in as we continue to cut down units. Even if we don't take out entire groups, the damage that we're dealing here should be meaningful because if the units are more roughed up, then we might be fine. Now, these... Oh! And they're black powder units that set up shields. Let's try to eat these if we can, getting the boars into position to deal damage. They're both melee and ranged units, it looks like. Very interesting. Well, the main pile does kind of look like we're winning. The leader has definitely breached and has not taken any damage. He has 9,000 HP at his back. Cannons are pushing in with that in our main control point is about to break as well but these guys have suffered some casualties they're definitely hurting i thought this side was going to go a little bit better i'm not going to lie to you but all of our units just broke dang i don't think i actually conquered this pit over here wiped out yet again although look at this jade lancers wounded those flying pegasus things what were these called Righteous Lances of Wai Jin. Well, they've been damaged too. But we have lost yet another building as the Western provinces continue their rampage. You dare approach me. Clan Rictus. No, like what you say. Wait, are they calling off our peace treaty? <laughs> okay. All right, friends. I think it's time to wipe out the Rictus. We tried to make it work. We tried to be their friend. I could take their territory and push west and unite with the Crooked Moon. No way! These Wood Elves took a castle away from the vampires? They're probably more of a threat than we thought. And this one is still advancing towards Karak Ungor, surrounded. Whoa! Clint Ferrix got a big thing! Okay, one problem at a time. Argor is actually out of range to make it back to the Nobby Gorge. But we are going to... Oh, is this the border? Oh, we're in range. We're already raiding. Fantastic. We're going to walk... I'm going to say... A little bit in that direction. Nothing too crazy. Not committing too hard. Zok is going to not march stance, retake the Great Hall of Greasus. We lost this very recently. Only a few soldiers left behind to defend, and we will retake that no problem. Look how much that's already helped our money move back in the right direction. Losing this territory was like the heart of my economy. I literally just have gold buildings set up everywhere over here. So we felt it really hard. Art of Fulatif is going to continue marching towards the Elemental Winds Temple yet again. Just garrison defenses taken down. We will occupy this settlement and continue to move towards any other settlement that the Western provinces have, which is quite a lot. Before they took this territory over, it was only seven, though, and I believe we see all of them. So we could wipe them out if we can contain Zhao Ming here and expand to this territory while he is pinned down. All right, back over in that central mountain range, we are going to... 
we have two options. Underway towards this army and try to get them off of Kirik Ungor, which is probably the better option. Protect my territory first, put my own life vest on, and then worry about everything else that's going on. What I want to do is help Vlad expand. Now, Vlad and I are not allies at the moment. Why does he hate me so much? Just aversion and strategic threat. What if, Vlad, I gave you some more money? 2000's a hell of a lot. We're still deteriorating. But look at all these factions he's at war with. If we start going against those factions, we start helping him, that could help us. We just have to be friends with a vampire, which is weird. Uh, this guy that I was going to let live is now raiding my territory. So we're just going to chase after him. And uh, the second he messes up, Grimgore is going to walk in and cut that throat. He's just out of range right now, I believe. Although, no, he can still move. He's in range. Let's declare war. What's that? I want to move and attack if we can't. That's okay. We're, uh, we'll we'll do it next turn. Unfortunately, I couldn't move anymore. Clan Rictus is down here. We just need to remember which of the settlements they actually held on to. The Bone Gulch was taken when the Abominations raided us. So it should be free to grab. I'm going to march Ugrok in this direction and hopefully just scoop that up. Clan Moors is down here as well. We don't officially have a problem with them, uh, but all these Skaven are kind of working together at the end of the day. I believe most of these ruins heading up north is Clan Rictus. So if we can unite my desert, I'd be pretty happy at the end of the day. And that is going to end turn 78. Really interested to see how these guys decide to advance, they're underweighing, so they might be able to skip my biggest defense, my biggest wall here, and start heading straight for Saber Mountains. If they do that, I will not be able to reach them in time, but I also don't have the money to recruit literally anything. So let's hope they're mostly posturing. They're probably not. Kugath is moving in on Zhao Ming. He really is sandwiched. Crooked Moon is reaching out, feeling very friendly. They would like a non-aggression pact. These guys are at war with the Border Princes. <laughs> They're still alive. Can Ungrand and the Golden Order, which are northwest on the other side of the Vampires. The Vampires should also be at war with the Golden Order as well. So we're making diplomatic decisions that move us closer to being friends with Vlad. Being said, Vlad looks like he only has two territories. The Wargrove of Woe attacked the building and we won. We're going to get more gold from that as well. We're gonna sell them off back to their family to boost our treasury. The fact that they attacked a building that I wasn't occupying and lost. Oh, they underwent. Oh, that's really bad. Uh, means that it does free me up for some decision making with how to uh, respond to that faction. However, Clan Ferric is way more of a threat right now. Grimgor is very far away from home. What did these beastmen end up doing? They moved a crazy long distance away from me. We're going to march to keep up. I may not be able to do that, though. I may not be able to uh, actually keep pace with these guys. Okay, well, since this is technically defended, we could cut west or east. God, we have to go so crazy far. All right, the actual plan. We are going to move southwest. We are going to march that direction and enter this Western territory for the first time. This is the first time Grimgore's army has left this mountain range. I'm going to help Vlad expand and fight back any of these factions that start encroaching on my mountain territory. I have 
to wrap this up nice and tidy in a bow. I need this to be mine. I was under the impression that you guys had way more settlements than five. Interesting. I can't see all of them yet, though. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Well, with the way our reputation with the Crooked Moon is going, we may have friends sooner rather than later. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, they're going to surround my capital. We do have some money. This is my emergency recruitment to try and keep my capital safe. This army could all die very quickly, and I can't afford to upkeep them. But if they defend, that's all they need to do. And that'll be there in two turns. This is at least a two-turn walk away. Even if they march, it'll take them two turns to get here. So that's something. We just threw a lot of money at that for a something. That's not guaranteed, but that's where we're at. Uh, Knobbly Gorge is occupied. We're in range. This is Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, inside of our settlement. We tricked him into moving in here. We're going to encircle him and see how he responds to that. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Zok is going to continue to clean up everything this guy took from us, going to Grimtop next, and hopefully helping us encircle Zhao Ming in just a few turns. Uh, maybe a three days walk away if we march. Uh, Art of Fulatif could double back to help out as well, but I'm going to continue to have him march forward. I literally want to remove as much of this guy's uh, map as I can. Remove as many settlements from this guy as I can. I'm not super interested in occupying these. I mean, this land's okay for me. Don't get me wrong. But uh, we need money from raiding, number one, to upkeep that army I just, I just bought. And... Uh, because we're back capping so many of this guy's settlements, if we kill him here and they don't do a peace treaty, we gobble up the rest. If we kill him here and they do a peace treaty, well, all of a sudden, they're a much, much, much weaker faction. Ugrok is heading west towards the Bone Gulch. This is occupied. We don't know by who. And I don't care. Oh. It just, just has Skaven corruption. It wasn't occupied. Fascinating. I think Clan Moors owns the southern end, so I need to go up and take the northern end. Meanwhile, Kolek is taking territory away from the northern provinces, and his attitude towards us is improving pretty rapidly, in fact. <laughs> this, invading this area has actually been one of the best things we've done for, for our diplomacy in quite a while. Uh, also, something to remember, uh, even if this guy likes me, the Ever Chosen may not. And with that, we are rapidly approaching turn 80. I really hope I can catch up to these beastmen and don't regret starting a war with an army that's significantly faster than me. Oh, well, this does buy us some time. I wonder if he changed his mind when he saw my army starting to form. Uh, Clan Ferret cut southwest, went for Great Skull Lakes, and easily toppled this. When we built our cities up here, I never thought anyone was going to get by that Great Wall in the passageway. So if Grimgor is here in these mountains and underways in front of these guys... There's a chance that they attack me, right? Just because I'm here. Uh, it looks like that's not the case today. Uh, Vlad is losing more territory as the Empire is moving over. Whoever this is just wiped him clean out. So perhaps my idea of being on Vlad's good side isn't the best idea, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Marching towards the settlement without a care in the world. Could I underway closer? Looks like it's going to be about the same regardless. Uh, as of right now, 
Is this improving? Improving? Deteriorating. Um, Kislev isn't mad at me, which is odd. He like they will be soon. Is Kislev allied with the Empire? They are not. Great news. Fantastic news. We might be Kislev friends. We'll find out together. Okay, we are going to underway. Just stand right here. We'll attack next turn. I want a peace treaty. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to chase you around anymore. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Keep raiding. You're not bothering me. Just get out of here, please. I have more pressing matters to deal with, like the Skaven that just disappeared in the Great Skull Lakes. Now, Grimgore is still quite a few days away from getting to this location. But there is a chance that we might be able to underway to cut that path down a little bit more. Let's not forget, we still have another army recruiting nearby. This isn't going to be a strong army, but they could encircle that building for sure. We're going to continue to move Grizzgut south. He is marching like crazy. Finally made it to the Maw Gate. This is probably our strongest marching army. It's costing us 4,720 gold per turn just to upkeep this. And so far they have seen zero action. I can't wait to see them actually fight something next turn. In between turns, Kugath came to Mount Thug and actually attacked it, meaning this place is already weakened and I'll be able to move in and scoop that up next turn, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Looking southeast, Artiful Atif is definitely in range of the village of Tigerman. That's going to be another easy, easy decisive victory. And we're going to occupy this building as well. 13 turns left on our Wa, and I'm trying to get the most out of it. It looks like this might be the end of this guy's territory, which is really good news for us. I can just cut north, grab both of these, and start cutting west to kind of take over everything inside of his home. <laughs> Meanwhile, we are still encircling at the Nabi Gorge. They think this is a decisive victory. I don't know if I believe it. I'm going to encircle one more time. This is not going to be an auto-resolve fight. We are definitely fighting this dude, and I need to make sure he's beaten up a little bit more before we do it. We literally saw him turn into a dragon. Uh, that's commanding a little respect for me. <laughs> I hope it's pretty obvious why. Okay, with Ugrok here, we are going to underway, kind of northwest, make our way towards the Sump Pit. I believe this is occupied by Clan Rictus. Might be Clan Moors. We might be getting into wars with all kinds of Skaven. I'm not sure. But if I could take over just a few territories here, we'll actually unite our region with the Crooked Moon. And then that is looking like a green mountain to me. Let's have you then. All you yep, there's Clan Moors. They're next on the list. Right back down your throat. Wait! <laughs> they want a non-aggression pact. They're in a defensive alliance with Clan Rictus, who I'm at war with. I guess I'm not at war with Clan Rictus. I'm about to be. I'm going to decline this. I think uh, we probably need to clear out some of these Skaven. Clan Rictus reaching out for the 20th time. Is Are you going to... Yep. Oh, they're at war with us. Thanks, Clan Rictus. You really actually just saved me a bunch of trouble. Whoa, or not. They are attacking immediately. This is Mount Greyhag. That's a double stack army moving in to finish off this settlement. Uh, that's very close to the army I had moving around. If they split this up, that's really good for me. If they keep it together, that is a bit more problematic. Oh God, I think I'm at war with every Skaven. I don't even know where that guy lives. Oh, uh, Warlords of Chaos. So let's see. This faction has declared war on you. Well. Well. Uh, last I saw, Kolek was down here. 
I don't know why he's declaring war on me now. Like, literally, we've been doing nothing but improving our relationship. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clan... Is this Farrick? Is moving in my territory again. Their march stance moving southeast. The Empire is moving towards me. Ooh, a lot of Empire is moving towards me. And they have encountered our army who was in underway stance. Underway, I might do okay. All right, boys. There's a huge Empire army approaching. We have never fought the likes of them before. We do not know what their army has in store. But we do have a very long, narrow, straight area for our catapults to hopefully do a lot of work in. I have a pretty bas basic line here, melee in the front, range behind it. We're going to move the line up as we see fit. But really, first thing I want to do is uh, hit these guys with a lot of catapults. It looks like they have backed up quite a lot, which they should do, to be honest with you. So let's move up and make sure that we are protecting our most valuable unit right now, those catapults. This is looking a little wonky. We'll figure it out. Speed up time as well. We've moved up. We're just out of range here. I say just. We're actually still a pretty considerable amount out of range. They're waiting on reinforcements that are going to be here in just a moment. And then I imagine they're going to start pushing forward real hard. Uh, I'm actually thinking about just keeping these catapults right here and trying to hold this line. Uh, for our units that are in the front looking a little weird, we'll bring them to the back for now and get them ready to run to positions that start to get overrun. We also have our leadership in a spot where it's hitting most of our units with that big ol' aura, which will be nice. Sped things up a little bit again. It doesn't look like they're going to voluntarily move forward. Our option is to use our catapult to get them moving. However, we gotta move quite far to get the catapult up there. Alternatively, I could try to send our leader alone up to the front line. He is on a war bore after all, which will give him some decent movement speed bonuses. Uh, the problem is if anyone on the enemy surrounds him or has better speed than him, which his speed is what, 70? These trolls, dude, might be faster. They're 34, I take that back. Okay, they are starting to at least shift around a little bit. Can I get them to chase me is the real question. I can. I got a trap waiting for him. So far, they just kind of let me approach. They they squared up for it. I'm going to see what happens if I just back up now. That's looking like a good sign. It's actually kind of splitting the army. I hope they keep chasing. If I can keep their attention, I would love to do that. They're almost in catapult range now. Okay. Okay. So they clearly have superior numbers here. But if I can make them chase my leader in this kind of closed off area, what is the speed on these trolls? I don't think I saw the right unit earlier. No, 34. It's tree kin. It's not trolls, I see. Okay, well, they're almost in fire range now. The catapults should be taking aim. Let's see if indeed they are. Yeah, they're starting to. And we're just kind of maneuvering to the side of a lot of these arrow barrages without taking any damage. The first barrage did hit on these great swords. They took a big hit. If I can keep dancing them around right here, we might be okay. It'll take some time, don't get me wrong. The whole army is advancing. But that catapult damage is gonna start to spread out soon as well. We are taking a lot of arrow fire, so I'm gonna play a little further on the left side here. Keep them running, keep them chasing. Yes, yes. And if I can group up more units, that means more shots for the catapult to easily land. We've actually almost broken one of the units on the front line here. These great swords 
that are trying to push up. We still have a little bit of room too to work with. We are starting to see some of the cab units really start to move. Let me check their speed. 78, they are faster than me, so I need to leave. I need to leave. Okay, let's start firing these catapults into very grouped up sections of the army like this guy right here. Let me get my leader behind the wall. Cavs are charging in. Let's make sure they are being focused down. Our sword boys did absorb that hit pretty well. More catapults into the group. Let's aim right in here. And let's aim you right in here, baby. All right, boys, here we go. Leadership is clashing on the front line. Although not deciding to stay around for a very long time, is he? I'm gonna have my archers focus their leadership as best I can. We also have more melee ready to reinforce as these guys are moving up. If you don't have a shot there, that's okay. I need to move my orc back. He's still taking quite a lot of damage here. This army is pushing up in a very big way. Let's move back up to reinforce our front line. We need to get catapult shots on these archers more so than anything else, it seems. So I'm gonna really focus on these archer lines if I can. No, I don't want to move their group too much if I can stand it, but I do need them at spots where I need them to be. Uh, let's make sure these archers are focusing. Let's get some extra damage in here as well. The leadership is rolling over us at the moment. I felt pretty good about this expansion to the west, and we've literally been put in our place by the very first army that has moved up. This is a decisive defeat. And just like that, they showed up in a big way. My leader didn't die. We will be able to hopefully fall back and recover. Nope, nope, my leader did die and we will not be able to fall back and recover. Well, in the north, we are being pushed in by a weaker double stack. <laughs> While trying to recruit just to defend what little we actually have here, I am going to start moving Slaga closer to the east, but uh, even being in a better position, his army isn't very good. Uh, we have 6,000 gold, though. Can't recruit in March stance, but I'm in a building. Doesn't that override it? I thought it would. We have the option of sending Grimgore west to kind of stop these guys from continuing to push up the mountain. And I do think that would work. But I am being attacked by Clan Moors, who have a massive golem. I don't know if you've noticed this. And I don't have an easy way of stopping them from advancing. This is actually getting pretty spicy over here. Maybe I committed too much into attacking the Western provinces and trying to teach them a lesson. Maybe inevitably I'm the one that learned the lesson. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode, everybody. We have one of the strongest leaders in the game encircled, while other factions, Skaven in every direction, have all risen up against us at once as the Empire pushes in towards our western border. And the long-held alliances are no longer holding in the north as the chaos wastes close in. Fight the predicament. See you guys on Friday.